Welcome back to Finger Lakes today. A tough night for Q's basketball. We're going to get into a little more of that in a bit here. Uh, Nate Sharman and Jim Sinekopi with us in the studio. Nate, uh, what else happened in the sports world last night? First of all, thanks for having me, Josh. Rebecca, wish you guys an early Thanksgiving Eve and have, have a safe and happy holiday. But yes, we'll start with positives. Sabres finally won a game. You know, after dropping eight in a row, uh, they win 7-2 last night in Montreal. Um, some positives out of that one for sure. Finally good to get on the, in the win column for them. They're back at home tonight, play the Blues, 7 p.m. at Key Bank Center. So uh, they'll try to make it Another win? Row, right? Two in a row? Maybe, you never know. Wow. Right? But a lot of other good stuff going on uh, the rest of the week and with this holiday week. The Bills back in Detroit after they played there on Sunday. Now they're going to play the Lions on Sunday on Thanksgiving at 12.30. So a uh, good Thanksgiving Day game for them. Uh, the Syracuse football team was at Boston College. They'll be there on Saturday night. Our producer, Paul Russo, will be in attendance. In Ooh. Boston, so that'll be cool to see because we'll be able to see some good content out of him for that too. So, um, the Cornell basketball team they took a win over Canisius last night, winning 79 to 70. Uh, they moved to four and one on the season, and Friday they'll be at Monmouth University to play a game there. And uh, don't forget about Hobart hockey; they're eight and zero this year. It's best start since 2007-2008, and they are ranked number one in the nation for D3 hockey. So. Uh, a lot of fun to go watch them play at the cooler. I've had the pleasure to go play, go watch them a few times this year and, and even play under Mark Taylor, the head coach there. Grew up with a couple of his sons, so we even got to play under him in my hockey days back in Geneva. So really fun to go watch them play, and especially at the cooler in Geneva. So they're home this weekend, Friday night, uh, against Castleton at 7 p.m. And on Saturday, they play Skidmore at 4 p.m. So if you have nothing to do and you're looking to go watch some really good hockey, head on over to Geneva this weekend and, and see them play. Hobart basketball team is pretty good, too. Yes, they are. Yep. And uh, they have three brothers. Oh, really? Um, they're a sophomore, like a junior, and that way up. But the three brothers, they, they play at the same time, too. They, they are all are contributors on the court at the same time. Wow. Um, you don't see that very often. That's cool. So maybe we can actually get them in the studio or That'd have a fun. conversation with them. Yeah. Or maybe we should talk to their mom. <laughs> <laughs> So here's my question for the both of you about the Bills. We're heading into Thanksgiving. What are our expectations for not just the Bills, but Josh Allen? Let's start with you, the Bills fan, Nate. Oh, they should take care of business. Uh, you know, 10-point favorite on the road in Thanksgiving is difficult. I guess the Lions team that's played well the last two weeks. So They've it's, had a it's, lot of close games. Yes, and I, I, think, um, you'll see, I think you'll see a similar Josh Allen to what you saw Sunday, um, which was, to me, a guy that was really focused on not turning the football over, and that's something that... He did well in that game, didn't turn it over at all. Um, I don't want to use the word pedestrian, but not usual Josh Allen, you know, not making superb plays, jumping over people, throwing it 80 yards, you know, not, not the usual Josh Allen, but someone that's going to, you know, help his team, put his team in the position to win a football game, and I think you'll see that. From yeah, on ten point days. favorites against a team that's won four in a row. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> Are they going to cover the spread? Um, I would say no, but. Yeah, probably not. It's a big spread. That's a big spread. For a team that's right on the cusp. It's double digits, you got to go with the dog. Yep. Agreed. But I'd like to see them cover the spread. I'd like to think that they can beat Detroit. Um, you know, in the beginning of the season, you're talking about one of the favorites for the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And, you know, now after losing two of their last three yep. and at Detroit with only four days off, although Detroit's only had four days off too, but I think this is one of the bigger games of the season. Uh, if they win this, they can then reestablish themselves as one of the dominant teams in the AFC over the next few weeks, heading towards Christmas. Um, if they lose this game, all of a sudden they're in the wild card hunt. Yep, for sure. That AFC East is tough. So, a lot of good teams. Um, I don't know. They, they, they seem to have stepped up their run game a little bit. Um, you know, like all teams, they've dealt with injuries, but I think that Thursday's game at 1230 is a catalyst game for them. They're either going to propel themselves back to be who they thought we were going to be, or they're going to regress to a team that might not make the playoffs, which would be hard to even fathom if you talk back in yeah. September. That would be a, a colossal kind of lost season if that were to happen. But I see them kind of staying on track. Um, covering 10 points, it, like you said, is tough, especially any 10-point any favorite in, in the NFL is tough to do. But I see them kind of, you know, getting, like I said, getting back on track and, and kind of getting back into their ways. And like Dick said after the game, we're back on track. So I think it's going to be a really important game for them on Thursday. How long do you think we continue to see game manager Josh Allen versus MVP caliber Josh Allen? Injury, do you think the injury is playing a role in that, or is it mainly psyche just going into kind of a, a tumultuous few weeks here? Maybe a little bit, but I don't think too much. You know, he's, he's been practicing more and more. He, he threw 
threw some passes in front of media at practice, which is something he hasn't done in a few weeks. So I think that that elbow injury is feeling better and better. But I think it's more so, like you said, the psyche, the confidence, you know, making sure that he doesn't put his team in a position to lose a game when he turns it over two, three times. So I think you might see that kind of hero Josh Allen come out more towards the end of the year. Maybe if they do need to win a few games against some tough AFC opponents or even in the playoffs if they so, so need them, and I think they will. And I guess if you want to slump, this is the time of year to slump. Uh, but it's time to rebound, and maybe the same can be said for Syracuse uh, basketball. Rough night last night, uh, Jim. How much are you worried about what happened last night looking forward? I'm worried. I'm depressed. <laughs> like, we used to be the best. You know, we used to be uh, guaranteed NCAA tournament every year, and, you know, we haven't been now to the NCAA tournament in three years, Paul? Two years? Last two years. Um, no NCAA tournament. Um, you know, I've, I always said that the move to the ACC was going to hurt the program, but here we are now after losing last night. Again, same, similar thing with the Bills. If It's early in the season, a lot can happen, but if we win last night against St. John's, then we're on the good side of the bubble. We lose, now we're on the bad side of the bubble. It's right. early to be talking about the bubble in November, but we're 3-2. and two. So, um, yeah, very disappointing. Um, very disappointing. I thought they played okay, and they got good contribution from the from the freshman Judah Mintz. I think it's really gonna they're really gonna rely on him. And but seeing guys like Joe Girard, who's been there before, kind of falter at the end of the game and overtime, you know, turning the ball over and you know taking ill-advised shots, that's something tough to see with a guy that has been there for a long time should know better. Two games in a row down there at the Barclays Center, they had a double-digit first half lead and and blew it, um, blew that lead, ended up going to overtime. Fortunately, they were beat Richmond, but um, get St. John's, no. And yeah, Judah Mintz is great. But then the game, he had two key turnovers, so he's a freshman. Yeah. Joe Girard played terrible last night. He's a senior, and then going into the overtime period, uh, down the stretch, key possession with about a minute left, he just throws the ball away. Mm -hmm. And he has two transition opportunities where he doesn't even hit the rim. And, you know, again, he's, Joe Girard's a senior. Right. Judah Mintz is a freshman, and Judah Mintz, he kept them in that game. For oh, yeah, he was fantastic. And, uh, and the other thing I don't really understand is, like, Jesse Edwards obviously would, to me, would be the go-to guy. And as that lead was you know, shrinking that they had built, he was on the bench with foul trouble. But when he came back, they just didn't go to him consistently until the uh, beginning of overtime when he uh, – he looked unstoppable whenever he got the ball. So even when they had the ball with a chance to uh, win in the end of regulation, the ball went into him and he kicked it back out to Torrance who shot a off balance, you know, fade away on the baseline. They had no chance of going in, but I, I think that Jesse Edwards needs to be established down there on the block. And I think that in a game like that where Joe Girard um, is just awful, keep him on the bench. We got other guys, I love the freshmen, and uh, not only Mintz, but Bell. And we didn't see a lot of Copeland, but it's uh, frustrating and disappointing. You know, there's no reason that Syracuse basketball needs to be missing the NCAA tournament too. And now it looks like potentially three years in a row. Um, we'll see what they see if they can bounce back. But they'll, they, I would predict they'll lose two more games before January 1st. Really? Well, yeah, that could happen. What? Uh what did you make of Jim Beheim's tone last night in the post-game presser? He, he talked about the guys being tired, back-to-back -back overtime games. Uh, give any credit to that, or is that no, just a No, I don't, excuse? because St. John's played back-to-back. -back. Um, in fact, St. John's played the later <laughs> game two nights ago, so they had less hours in between when they came back. And what's an overtime game, an extra five minutes? And No, I don't, but, uh, you know, Beheim's press conference is you know, like a high-rated miniseries almost. You know, you can't miss them. Like they're, right. I agree. Um, and, you know, he's a cur bit of a curmudgeon, but I don't think that they were tired. I think, you know, that Joe Girard played awful, and he was on the court for, you know, a majority of the time, and he didn't deliver. Along with Judah Mintz, who you give a pass because he's a freshman, he's made a couple of terrible turnovers late. So, um I don't know. Their defense at times looks great. You know, they force shot clock violations, and then other possessions they just don't get out of shooters. So, it's um, it's going to be a, a uphill climb now. 
for sure. But we'll try to get back um, back on track on 4 p.m. on the Dome on Saturday against Bryant. Yeah, Should let's be hope they beat back. Bryant. Yeah, let's hope. <laughs> I mean, not going to lie, there's a lot of opinions and feelings today. Like, I, I can feel the energy when it's come to sports today. So Rebecca, thank you. it's a long winter around here. Yes. And one thing that makes it go is when Syracuse basketball is good. But when, you know, we get into February and nobody yes. in the national scene is even talking about Syracuse is on the bubble, then it's, uh, it's depressing. You just want to get here a little quicker. Coming off of... Do you, I haven't asked you yet. I want to know: Is Syracuse football going to get another win this season, or is our oh, we'll be boss college on Saturday? Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I like it. Oh, all a little right, bit of that's... confidence there. All right, all right, guys. Well, thank you all so much for your input. Happy uh, Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you. Um, now here's a look at more of the stories that we're following for you here on Finger Lakes today. Here are more of the stories we're following for you this morning on Finger Lakes today. This news is a service of.